Leftists hex Donald Trump with a death curse. Mr. Reagan. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And the vaccines are coming momentarily. Thank you very much. And Walter Reed, what a group of people. Thank you very much. Now, to most rational Americans, this was a great message of hope and optimism. But to the left, this was pure evil. I'm about to show you a compilation put together by the great folks over at the Tucker Carlson Show. Now, this is a compilation of leftists losing their minds. Viewers should know that what you're about to hear is utterly insane and dangerous. Of course, you should be afraid of COVID um, and how disrespectful that is. And now we see this tweet, which is heartless. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it control your life. Yeah, you don't have to let it control your life, man, because you live in the White House. It is insulting to every American who wears a mask, who's been laid off as a result of COVID. It is a video of a very sick man with very sick ideas. Everyone should be afraid of COVID. Look what it has already done. I am flabbergasted by that. And honestly, I cannot stop thinking about it. Donald Trump is telling you, don't be afraid of the deadly coronavirus. No one on earth has done more to spread the coronavirus than Donald Trump. <laughs> the left is feigning outrage because they claim that Donald Trump is being disrespectful to those who have died of coronavirus. But that, of course, is absurd. Too many people are petrified of this virus. The recovery rate is extremely high for this virus. The reason so many people have died is not because the virus is particularly deadly, it's because it is particularly transmissible. That is, it just infects a lot of people and will kill the most vulnerable people that it happens to infect. And this is tragic, this is awful, but it should not stop anyone from going out and living their lives because it's just very unlikely that contracting this virus will seriously affect you. You've got to maintain control of your life. Don't let the virus control you. This is great advice, and the president was right to give it. One thing that you may have forgotten is that another prominent figure in politics recently caught the virus, and this person also had a message of hope, rather similar to what Trump said. But on that, the media was silent. Let's watch. Here's the secret to kicking this virus. It's about your will and devotion. The virus wants us to lay down. The virus wants us to take it. The old notion of get in bed and stay there when you get sick, it sounds great, but you can't stay there. You have to fight, you gotta fight back. And the COVID is banking on you doing nothing. It wants us passive on our backs. It wants us to do nothing. The answer has to be to do everything. The virus wants us to do nothing. The answer has to be to do everything. You have to fight. You've got to fight back. Wow, that sounds so positive. That sounds a lot like Trump. Funny how when Cuomo had this message about fighting back and working even though you're scared and you feel defeated, somehow that's fine, no backlash. But when Trump provides an almost identical message of positivity to the nation, well that, that's somehow offensive and dangerous. The left hates Trump, okay, we all know that. They hate him though, they hate him so much that their hate has warped their minds and they have become hysterical about everything and they twist perfectly reasonable statements into something that they can pretend to be outraged about. But as leftists feign outrage at their twisted interpretation of Trump's words, they are tweeting stuff that is truly insane. Following the initial announcement of Trump's contracting the virus, there was a barrage of absolutely deranged messages on Twitter wishing death on the president. I mean, this was beyond the normal hyperbolic use of the term psychotic. This stuff was legitimately psychotic, like in a clinical sense. Now we're gonna go through some of the insanity in one moment. First, you have to skip ahead. Yes, I'm aware, of course you're gonna skip the ad. I accept this, I've come to terms with this, but still I, have to sell you something. So with the election less than a month away, it's time to step back. The political uncertainty could be devastating for your retirement fund if 
it's not handled properly. Now, I think you'd agree, whatever the outcome of the election, things may be rough for a while. And if you're worried about your finances taking a hit, you should look at protecting your savings, especially that hard-earned retirement fund. A gold IRA uses the value of precious metals to keep you out of trouble. The team at Noble Gold know how to do this. They've done it for thousands of people already. Don't let a sudden stock market or banking crisis wipe out your finances. And check this out. If you need an extra reason to jump on this, Noble Gold is gifting a 1 10th ounce solid gold American Eagle proof coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover going through in October. Grab the phone, give Noble Gold a call now. There isn't much time left. You'll find the number below, 877-646-5347. And if you wanna jump on this, don't forget, pause the video and call them right now. All right, so these nasty tweets. Many of these tweets are replies to Trump's initial tweet about his diagnosis. This is where most of the vitriol can be found. A few common themes emerged pretty quickly. A lot of these degenerates were saying, well, I guess it isn't a hoax after all. And I mean, these crazy leftists, they obviously accepted the media lie that Trump called the coronavirus pandemic a hoax, which he did not. He said that the left's politicization of coronavirus is a hoax. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. They're politicizing it. We did one of the great jobs. You say, how's President Trump doing? They go, oh, not good, not good. <laughs> they have no clue. They don't have any clue. They can't even count their votes in Iowa. They can't even count. <laughs> no, they can't. They can't count their votes. One of my people came up to me and said, Mr. President, they tried to beat you on Russia, Russia, Russia. That didn't work out too well. They couldn't do it. They tried the impeachment hoax. That was on a perfect conversation. They tried anything. They tried it over and over. They've been doing it since you got in. It's all turning. They lost. It's all turning. Think of it. Think of it. And this is their new hoax. Basically, Trump is saying that the lies and deception by the leftist media about the way Trump dealt with the pandemic, he's saying that that was a hoax. And he was right, and they still perpetrate this hoax. Keep in mind, Trump said this after he closed down travel from China. Trump had taken serious action to try to curtail the spread at a time when leftist politicians were more interested in appearing to be culturally sensitive than trying to protect Americans. You should come to Chinatown. Precautions have been taken by our city. Uh, we know that there's a concern about tourism traveling all throughout the world, uh, but we think it's very safe to be in Chinatown and hope that others will come. Uh, we want people to be concerned and vigilant. However, we don't want them to be afraid. Another common theme in the Twitter feed was the bleach lie. A lot of these degenerates were saying, why don't you just inject bleach? Now, of course, Trump never said that injecting bleach would cure coronavirus, but this is another common belief by the loony left. So they just repeat it constantly. It's a big technique for the left. Repeat a lie enough times until it becomes the truth, at least in their deranged minds. Now, a lot of these degenerates were saying, and this, this is a particularly crazy thing. They were saying that this was all a trick, that Trump never actually contracted the virus, but that he's just pretending as a way to get sympathy from the American public and to come out of it looking healthy and strong and to say, look, coronavirus isn't that big of a deal. I got over it. And this is an actual conspiracy theory. You know how the left wing media is constantly claiming that everything that we believe on the right is a, quote, conspiracy theory. Well, this is an actual conspiracy theory. This is one of those tinfoil hat crazy people things. And this isn't just random trolls on Twitter either. Some of the people that are claiming this are leading figures on the left. The radical left filmmaker Michael Moore believes this particular conspiracy theory. Now, one particularly cruel tweet that I read was from a girl who proposed that maybe Trump caught coronavirus because people on the left were praying that he would get it, as if Trump getting ill and possibly dying was an answer to the prayers of crazy left-wing Americans. Lovely. And then there's this woman, Carly Chris. And this is bizarre. She's responding to Robbie Starbuck, who offered a prayer for the president, a genuine, kind prayer. Carly Chris wrote the following. Oh, look, a white male praying to another white male to support the white male in office. But <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. 
This woman's obviously insane. But of all the tweets, I think the weirdest and perhaps the most nefarious are these ones. These are written in the Ethiopian language of Amharic. Now, apparently, this is a satanic curse wishing death upon the head of the president. How disturbed do you have to be to cast a demonic curse against the president after he contracts a deadly virus? As I said, these people are truly sick. Now, as it happens, I actually have a friend who is Ethiopian. So I texted her the so-called curse and I asked her to translate it. And this is what she texted me back. She said, it's basically saying that sinners will die. And she also said that the use of a curse is very Eastern culturally. And I presume that she meant Eastern Ethiopian, although I did not ask her to clarify that. Now, she followed this with a personal note in which she wrote the following. It's very unkind. No matter how much you don't like someone, you should not wish them to be cursed or dead. It's the same people that fight for the elimination of the death penalty that want him to die. I don't understand how people don't see their own hypocrisy. I couldn't have said it better myself. There are no words to describe how deranged these people are. We always say that leftists are crazy, and I think at this point, the variety of adjectives that we tend to apply, these words have lost all meaning and no longer adequately describe how truly insane leftists have become. Now, a lot of the tweets are saying that Trump's contracting of coronavirus is karmic because the mainstream media has actually convinced people that it's Trump's fault that Americans have died from coronavirus. If the president had done his job, had done his job from the beginning, all the people would still be alive. All the people, I'm not making this up, just look at the data. You'd think that an absurd statement like that would lose Biden, like all of his voters, but no. Democrat voters really are that gullible. Leftist politicians and the mainstream media, they prey on the ignorant and the innocent. There are so many gullible Americans susceptible to the manipulative propaganda of the left that there are actually more registered Democrats in America than conservatives. It's actually possible to achieve political goals on a federal level in America just by tricking low information voters. And I'm not talking about idiots. I mean, some are idiots, obviously, but many of these people are doctors, they're teachers, they're mothers, they're ministers, and many of them are very good people. They're just simply ill-informed. So many Americans are, they're just so busy or they're uninterested in politics or they merely have got other priorities. They simply don't know the truth. There's just so much disinformation coming from so many media outlets that people are tricked. How many times has Trump condemned white supremacy? The answer is dozens, dozens of times. The press likes to ask Trump to condemn white supremacy because every time they do, it links Trump to white supremacists in the minds of all those people listening. It's an old trick, right? It's it's the have you stopped beating your wife trick, right? There's no good answer to the question, have you stopped beating your wife? You obviously wouldn't say no, but if you said yes, it implies that you used to beat your wife. But what's really awful is that if you say What the hell are you talking about? I never beat my wife. The denial actually implicates you in the minds of the listeners. The only good way to respond to such a question is to point out the trap to the listener, to educate them about the trick, and to attack the journalist for asking it. But this takes a lot of time, and unless you're very good at this sort of thing, and you're absolutely clear about what's going on, this tactic may not be all that effective. And so it's a really nasty trick, and it works a lot of the time. And that's why these journalists keep using this trick. In Trump's case, the question is, why don't you condemn white supremacists? Trump's answer is, I have. But then the reporter says, well, then you'd have no problem doing it right now. But every time Trump denounces white supremacists, it implicates him. It indicates to those watching that Trump needs to denounce white supremacists for some reason. Well, if he has to denounce them, then he must have some association with them. Otherwise, why is he always asked to denounce them. And so Trump doesn't really like doing this. It's a trap, he knows it's a trap, and he tries to avoid it. And when he denounced the Proud Boys during the debate, he asked Chris Wallace specifically, which group do you want denounced and what precisely do you want me to say about them? And Chris Wallace asked him very specifically to tell the Proud Boys to stand down. And that's precisely what Trump did. He then added stand by because Trump, he doesn't always say things exactly right. and. I think he was trying to just use different words to say the same exact thing, but the media jumped on this and said, ah, stand by. That means he wants them to wait for the moment that Trump needs them, and then he'll call them to act. Because indeed, that is what stand by means. 
But you know what standby also means? It also means the same thing as stand down. Stand by means to do nothing while other things are going on. For instance, if somebody needs help and you don't help them, a common criticism would be this person just stood by and did nothing. So to suppose that Trump was instructing the Proud Boys to wait for his signal, I mean, it's absurd. And the Proud Boys, by the way, they are not a white supremacist group. I know the leader of the Proud Boys, by the way, not Gavin McGinnis, I know him too, but but he did step down. The leader of the Proud Boys currently is this guy, Enrique Torrio. I mean, it's a pretty funny white supremacy group that has a Cuban American as their leader. I mean, Chris Wallace and Joe Biden, they don't even know what they're talking about. And honestly, Trump doesn't know anything about the Proud Boys either. He was asked to condemn a group, to order a group to stand down, a group that he knows nothing about, and he was just complying as a gesture of peace, as a gesture to say, I condemn violence. That was it. But it doesn't matter. The mainstream media saw a way to twist this into what they call a dog whistle. They were able to convince tons of gullible Americans to believe that Trump is indeed a racist because he said to the Proud Boys not to engage in violence, but instead to, quote, stand by. And you know what? The media has gotten as good as they have about persuading gullible Americans of obvious lies because they've been doing it for so long. When you need to lie all the time, you get great at convincing people of stuff. And that's the difference between the left and the right. The left has developed an expertise in deceptive persuasion. The right, we merely tell you the truth. All right, now let's step away from Twitter for a moment. The left-wing media has become even more sinister than the insane people on Twitter. Many left-wing politicians and political pundits have insisted that Trump needs to step aside for Mike Pence. And then if Mike Pence tests positive, he needs to step aside for Nancy Pelosi. This is such vicious opportunism. I'm honestly disgusted by this. I get that there are crazy leftists on Twitter and they're going to tweet nasty things. Their, their minds have been twisted by the persistent lies and the hate spewed by fake news media outlets like CNN and by a constant stream of deceitful propaganda from entertainment companies like Netflix. I get that. The satanic curse was a bit of a surprise and it's honestly a bit more than I might have expected, but I get it. But this attempt to exploit the president's illness by leftist operators to try to take over the government while he's ill, this is one of the rare exhibitions in cruelty and partisanship that I believe is utterly unforgivable. These people do not deserve power because with power, they will become unimaginably corrupt. Anyone who would exploit the illness of their political opponent on the first day they've been diagnosed, instead of wishing them well or expressing even a modicum of concern to try to steal power away from them immediately, these are the kinds of people that we must keep away from controlling our laws, our police, our businesses, our lives at all costs. At this point, the left is just lost. These people are despicable. They are disgusting. They have become the filth of humanity. I am no longer interested in saving these people. There are, however, many good people still on the left, but these are Democrat voters. Ordinary people with busy lives that just don't pay close attention to politics. People who think that they're doing the right thing by voting Democrat. They think that they're helping black people. They think that they're helping gay people. They think that they're helping the poor. These people I do still have hope for. These people still can be redeemed and we should do everything that we can to bring them into the light. So please don't be harsh. Don't be unreasonably cruel. Don't try to own your crazy sister-in-law who's just voted for Joe Biden. Be kind to them, sympathize with their concerns and offer them our solutions to these various problems. And maybe, just maybe, they'll realize that we're not so evil after all. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that isn't so. Good night. There are going to be millions of Democrats that are going to vote with us this time around because they too want that promise kept. It was a promise for less government and less taxes and more freedom for the people. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism.